think the best thing to do is stay safe, stay healthy, um, you know, take care of your family. Um, I've, you know, lots of people, the younger folks out there have not been through uh, significant challenges like this in their life. So it's, there's a lot of anxiety. Um, and, and I, I I'm, I'm going to go back and, and, and just talk about some things that have happened to me in my world. You know, I'm an old entrepreneur now. Okay. Brian, you're my son, uh, got you by a few years, but I'm going to go back 30 years. It's, we're in 2020, but 1990, 30 years ago, I was sitting, I had hundreds of employees. We were doing business all over the world. We had offices in the U.S., offices in Europe. We were beaming into dozens of countries. We had inventories, overheads, buildings, customer service centers, fulfillment. What happened? 1990, the Gulf War. It was a devastating uh, situation for every entrepreneur in the world because the world shut down. It was it was very similar to the eerie feeling that we have today. Every, when the Gulf War hit, everybody was tuned to their TV set. They weren't tuned to my infomercials. They were tuned to CNN and the news and our sales plummeted on a global basis. Our banks were calling. We had massive problems that were hitting us right now. I've been through this, right? It, it was a devastating situation, but we hunkered down, we learned from it, and actually we we ended up changing a lot of business practices, business models. We ended up deciding at this particular time, why did we need hundreds of people to do fulfillment, to do phone calls, to do phone answering, to do customer service? Let's contract it all out. So we changed our business model because what we found in the Gulf War that hit us hard, we had one company, one merchant account, one uh, credit card processing company, but we had one product that was causing us some big problems with quality control. And so the banks came in because we had this elevated response of, of complaints for just one item, it affected our whole company. So we ended up setting up separate LLCs for our different product companies. And we also said, we don't need to own fulfillment, customer service, all of the different things internally. We started selling off assets and the streamlined where we could contract things out. So today, Brian, as you well know, we operate a business that does north of $100 million a year with less than a dozen total people where I had hundreds before in the old days. So we've, I've learned from the old mistakes and now 30 years later, I'm, I'm, I'm able to say, yes, what I went through 30 years ago has given me some strength for today. So um, if you have a good business plan, you have a good business. I mean, I have uh, several of my companies that are surging right now. I can't because of public situations discuss which ones are which, but one of our public companies had a $1 million day on Amazon the other day. This was almost like a 10X of the biggest day before. So, you know, why is this happening? Well, because they had inventory, because they were preparing for this weeks and weeks ago when things were first starting. So there are things you can be doing. There are deals you can be putting together. I mean, for example, here's a celebrity, um, uh, Lionel Richie's daughter, Sophia Richie. She sells fashion products. So fashion maybe is a tough sell right now, but she's tweaked it with an approach of work from home fashion. Okay. This is a different twist. So the, this one little thing can give you a 3x, 5x, 10x return on what you're doing. And these are the things that we're working on because, you know, people are staying at home. 